let's talk about the undercard. And T-Street Controversy with Fight View 360. Let's start with Stephen Fulton and what he's been up to. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. By the way, uh, Fulton's win over Angelo Leo, who knocked the shit out of uh, Luis Alberto Lopez a couple of weeks ago, has aged really well. I did that video, the post fight on my channel. Uh, Stephen Fulton has been out for some time now. It don't seem like it's been that long, but it has. In fact, let me go pull up his resume really quick. By the way, once again, here's the card. Stephen Fulton is going to be fighting on the prelims. Do you hear me? So Rolly Romero gets a pay-per-view spot over Stephen Fulton. I guess because Rolly's been on pay-per-view view before, and maybe Rolly is considered a more marketable fighter. I'm not saying it, but it just doesn't make sense to me. Uh, so Stephen Fulton taking on the Carlos Castro. And basically, let me tell you right now, get this out of the way. And I'm going to do it again at the end of the video. I rate this card on a scale of 1 to 10. I give it a 6. A to F scale, I give it a C. And that's very close. To, that's, that's, like a, that's not a C minus. It's not a C plus. C plus is close to a B. B minus. This is not a B card. Because when you really think about it, you know, the only fight that really has some sort of real significance is Laura versus Danny Garcia. And when it comes to Canelo versus Belanga, we're trying to see if Belanga can, you know, knock Canelo out or if Canelo's gotten old to where a young guy who's never done nothing really in the division like a Belanga can somehow Puerto Rican power beat Canelo. I just don't see it. So Stephen Fulton, 21 and 1 with 8 KOs. He fought Naoya Inouye, Inouye back in July of last year. So here we are, uh, nearly a 14-month layoff. Very common over there for those PBC fighters. However, they are getting better because their fighters are now fighting for other uh, outfits. For example, Vito Malnicki fighting over on top rank. Uh, the Saudis getting their hands on a few PBC fighters. So... The fight was over in Japan. I remember there was a lot of speculation on whether it was his promotional team. I mean, excuse me, that he had to push his promotional team to make that fight. It hasn't been really confirmed. But from my understanding, from what was going around, was that Stephen Fulton really pushed for this fight and his team, kind of similar to what we know about uh, Errol Spence and Al Heyman and Heyman trying to keep Spence away from Crawford. It was looking like, you know, public opinion was saying that it was Stephen Fulton feather in his cap that really pushed for the big money payday over in uh, Japan. And also, I learned like not even five years ago, basically, he had a nice little growing fan base over in Japan, meaning Stephen Fulton, because they were already anticipating him in a fight with Inouye. So he hasn't been around and he's fighting on prelims. I can understand why he's upset. In fact, let me see. He posted it somewhere here. I think he took it down. He took it down. He took it down. He had a post up uh, about fighting on uh, uh, the prelims. I'm cool with taking the blame now for what? Originally, him and Caleb Plant was supposed to headline a PBC card that was supposed to take place this past weekend. Caleb Plant was going to fight Trevor McCombie, and I forgot, I believe that uh, Stephen Fulton was linked to Ronnie Reels, but allegedly uh, McCombie got an injury. It just didn't make any sense to me. And the car was going to take place down in Florida, and now Tim Zhu is going to be taking that place, that card in Florida, regular Amazon Prime, when he's going to be taking on uh, Bakram Mertazalia for the IBF title, hoping to get Erickson Lubin after that. Well, fight Erickson Lubin. Erickson Lubin likely will be the next IBF mandatory. And then Fundora Spence winner, a fight that they keep trying to like push through. So when it comes to Carlos Castro, you know, then basically this is a showcase get back fight for Stephen Fulton. That's pretty much all it is. By the way, look at this shit. This shit still bothering me. $89.99 for this pay-per-view. They are wild.
And this is no disrespect to Stephen Fulton, but it's like in this day and age where we got the Saudis putting on significant cards and right now pay-per-view buys are drying up. Streaming is at an all-time high. You know, fighters can only get one of these fights before you got to really get back at it. So it's like, all right, cool. Fight Carlos Castro, but then your next fight got to be something significant in this landscape. And when you look at Carlos Castro, it's on paper, it looked like it's going to be a fun fight. I covered when he uh, 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 got knocked out by Fandora. I mean, Figueroa, by the way, that's a rematch they can, they can possibly, you know, look into. Lost to Luis Neri. His only two losses, by the way. So it'll be a fun get back fight. You know, it's a it's a pay-per-view opener type of fight, I admit. But it really doesn't do anything for Stephen Fulton outside of, you know, it's like, all right, it's time for you to, you know, be active. So it's going to be interesting to see what route he's going to take next. And also, I'm guessing he's moving up to 126 because Carlos Castro. You know, is up there, you know, he's been floating around between 122 and 126 interested to see where this fight's going to take place. So I got Stephen Fulton. I don't see a knockout for some reason. I'm expecting for uh, it to be a little bit of a rough night for him, mostly because he's coming off a, off a layoff against a Mexican fighter. And these days you never know with these Mexican fighters, you know, you never know. They'll pop out and knock your ass out, but he's not known for two. That's a nice KO ratio. So I'm not, uh, uh, going to say he don't got no power or it may not happen so interesting fight but you know it, it's it, it it is what it is it is what it is now who i would like to see fulton fight next let's see well to be honest 126 all he's going to do is run into uh eventually i mean if he stays at 122 all he's going to do is run into Inoya again and is fighting tj doheny in a couple of weeks i believe that's september the 8th Sam Goodman is the next in line. So Inoye is pretty much tied up. And also he's saying he wants to stay at 122 for a little while. And he's got a big potential fight that I can't wait to see against Junto Nakatani. And as you can see between 115, excuse me, yeah, 115, one, uh, uh, 18, 122, the Japanese are taking over. You know, so I think it's in his best interest to start heading up to 126 because as you can see, plenty of fights out there for him to get. He can get that Figueroa rematch. That's over on the PBC side. Uh, Angelio, uh, and, uh, Angelio Leo rematch is right there. You know, you know, Nick Ball possible. Ray Vargas possible. Rafael, these these are fights that are possible, especially that we're seeing that um the Saudis have a relationship with PBC and top rank and they're putting these guys together to fight. So I think 120. Oh, there he is. He is at 126. So there you go. Boom. Number two by the WBA number seven by the WBC and shockingly not ranked by the WBO despite there he is number eight but he's not ranked by the IBF so there you go he's up there in the rankings Carlos Castro is ranked number five so at least he's ranked by the WBC So this may be the route that he's going. And don't be surprised if this ends up being a final. I mean, um, some type of eliminator. We find out on like fight night or fight week that the winner of this is going to have one more fight. And then they could possibly fight for a title shot. We'll not be surprised. But I think the Brandon Figueroa rematch is the way to go. My personal opinion. Uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. I wonder if we have any face offs from uh, Fulton and Castro. I believe we do. No, I couldn't seem to find a... Uh, uh, face off of them. I don't think he was at the press conference, but here is the uh, undercard. I mean the uh, prelim card. So starting at 6 p.m. Eastern, it's going to open up with Jonathan Lopez taking on a Richard Medina, uh, Roman Vila taking on a, a Ricardo Salas, and a and Fulton taking on Carlos Castro. So those are the three fights before they lead into the pay per view. That's going to open up with the next fight that we're going to talk about. The pay-per-view star, I guess, Rolly Ramiro, who's going to be opening up the Canelo versus Belenga undercard, taking on Emmanuel Jaime's. And Rolly is just, you know, the underachieving, overachieving, consistently inconsistent fighter. 
15 and 2 with 13 KOs, the highest of the highs, the lowest of the lows, 28 years old. Last fight got a shit pushed in by Isa Cruz. As you know, Isa Cruz just was upset. A lot of people think it's an upset, but I really don't. By uh, uh, Rayo Venezuela uh, just a couple of weeks ago on the uh, Crawford versus Madrimov undercard. So he got knocked out by Isa Cruz. He should have lost to Ismail Barroso and got knocked out by Tank Davis. So in reality, he could have three straight losses. And Anthony, can you dig it, yig it? Very long in the tooth, Anthony get get really hard. Wasn't really in it. He was fighting for the money. The only real solid, somewhat credible win he got in the last few years, I'm going to say Avery Sparrow. And Avery Sparrow, you know, is a bit of, is a, bit of a head case. But very underwhelming resume pretty much just, just fell to the top, if that makes sense. So I won't be surprised this fighter... I won't be surprised if he beats Roley. That's how I think of Roley. Never heard of this guy. Let me see if I can find some tape. I know I've seen him somewhere before. That that face looks familiar. It's from he got that Stockton face. I've seen this dude before. We're on one of these cards. Modesto. Let's see if we can find it. Let's see if we can find it. I've seen you somewhere before, mate. I'm gonna tell y'all where y'all seen him at. Y'all probably was, he probably was deep on some undercard somewhere and you probably was doing something in the background, getting ready for the main card, but you've seen this guy before. Let me see if we can find him. Where you been? No, I haven't seen this card that wasn't even televised. Were you on this card? No, he wasn't on that card. Was you on this card? No, maybe I didn't see this bloke before. That's even worse. He wasn't, damn, so dude been on club shows, opening up the pay-per-view over Stephen Fulton. I'll be gosh doggone it. Damn, so he's he hasn't been on any type of cards of significance, so I've never seen this dude before. So I'm guessing they're just trying to get Roley a win. Is that what it's looking like to try and get Roley a win? By slapping him up in, in here against this this young 24-year-old, but then knowing Roley... You know, you know, he's a little, how they used to say back in the day, uh, a little touched. There you go. Gifted. You know, no, I think the touched. Yeah. So, you know, I wouldn't be, <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if this dude, you know, beats a uh, Roley. But um, let's see, where's Roley fighting? Is he still staying at 140? So this guy's a 140, 135-er. Okay. Basically, I'm guessing take a 140 fights for the money, for the money. I'm guessing. Because you know, Roley is huge. Roley is huge. Let me see. Did Roley attend the press conference? Let me go check. Defeats. Hey, come on, man. Roley Romero. Go, Roley. Let's see what he had to say. I just want to let everybody know I'm just happy to be here again and, you know, just give you guys a great show once again. That will open up our pay-per-view event on September Damn, that's 14th. It? So let's hear from both men now. Oh, wait, hold on. Let me go back. That are in a fight against a guy that has never been in a top event. Do you believe your experience? Oh, well, at least they talked about it. By the way, that is uh, Ray Flores' uh, brother. I forgot his name. Is it Brandon Flores? I think it's Brandon. So this was the uh, L.A. press conference, the last of the two city press tour for this card. Um, as you can see, you got Roley and, uh, and uh, Emmanuel Jaime's on the stage. You got uh, Caleb Plant and uh, McCombie, Make America Great Again McCombie. You got Laura versus uh, Stephen Fulton. I mean, fucking Stephen Fulton. Laura versus Danny Garcia. Stephen Fulton is not there. In your fight against Jaime's. Well, a lot of people fall when they see some big lights, so, I mean, I am, but you also got to look at it like this, too. I mean, I have a lot of experience going to a lot of big fights I've also had success in, so, you know, I mean, he's a puncher, right? So, let's see what he does. Back to you, Jaimez. You have won four straight. Um, you heard Roley's been in these big-time fights, but... What has been working so well for you and how can you pull off the upset 
on September 14th? Uh, I mean, yeah, he has experience in the big fights, but it's not like I'm not experienced as a fighter. I've been fighting since I'm eight years old. So I've, I've been around, I training at Robert Garcia's gym, getting rounds in down there. So there's not gonna be a, a, a difference in, in, in the IQ of my boxing compared to his. So, um, I mean, I know he's been here. I know he's, he was a world champion. So, I mean, this, I, just, I, need, I need to win this fight. I'm gonna win this fight. I need, um, it's, gonna, it's gonna catapult my career pretty much. Roley had that bullshit uh, WBA belt that he didn't that he wasn't supposed to have. By the way, where are you at, Roley? Let's go see this face off. Fighting out of By the way, I'm seeing this dude beating Roley. Like I'm not giving Roley no faith. I have no faith in you, Roley. I got no faith in the homie. Damn, did they give up my man Carlos? I mean, uh, Jaime's some music. There we go. See, they walking all regular like that. He's never been on the stage. Man, he's going to whoop Roly ass. I can see it. I can see it. I just want to see the face off. Because this boat looks a little small. But Robert Garcia, Jim, been having a good year, man. So at least you know them guys are going to come to fight. You know, he's going to throw some bombs. So, see, here's the thing. The card is going to be exciting. I have no sit of two defeats fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada. He is one of the most unique and powerful fighters in the sport. The former WBA super lightweight world champion, Rolando Roli Romero. Yeah, let me mute that. Like he's going to get his make a wish award. Nope. All right, not that much of a size difference. I wonder what's going to be next for Roley. Let's go look at the rankings real quick. Assuming this fight, I'm pretty sure it's going to be at 140. I wouldn't be surprised if it's at like 142 or something. Let's go look at the uh, rankings at 140. Take a little gander. And see who we might want to see Roley fight next. Let's see here. So let's break down the 140 pound division. Alberto Puglio is likely going to be fighting Sandor Martin. Devin Haney is a champion in recess. Turkey out of shake is trying to put together a Ryan Garcia, Devin Haney rematch. But Ryan Garcia is a fucking bigot. I'll never forget what he said. A drunk, bigot, drug cheat. Leave that alone. Rayo beat Isai Cruz. And Rayo now should have to fight Ismail Barroso to eliminate that bullshit WBA title. Remember, Ismail Barroso should have beat Roly Romero. And he put O'Hara Davies' dick in the dirt. Liam Paro got that upset win over Sabriel Matias. He's supposed to be returning in November or so, likely in Australia. Do not be surprised, however, if he has to be forced to fight Richardson Hitchens um, in his first. I believe I believe that he does get a voluntary, but Richardson Hitchens is the mandatory. And Tiafima Lopez, well, he turned down the fight with Brian Norman, even though he wanted to fight Brian Norman at 147 for the WBO 147 pound title. So he's pretty much one foot out the door of 140 pound division. Tiafima Lopez. You got Arnold Barboza and uh uh I forgot the uh doggone what's his name? I forgot his name. Jose Ramirez possibly uh hooking up for a fight soon a fight that i feel should have happened a few years ago but they were under the same management and then you have jack catterall and regas progray is coming up so that's the 140 pound division where does roley fit in well would you entertain ruler Romero versus gary antoine russell that's a pbc fight logical to make Roly going to get his shit pushed in. I think that's, you know, that's the logical way to go. Bakhtir Akhmedov, also over there on the PBC side, still, I believe. But it's going to be a long time, you know, before Roly, put it this way, he ain't never, I don't think he's going to ever sniff a title shot again, my personal opinion. And I'm not trying to be hard on the bloke. I'm just saying, I just, you know, that's the way the cookie crumbles. But as I was saying, see, the card is not, you know, it's going to be some exciting fights. For example, Stephen Fulton might get tested. Roland Ramirez might get knocked out. 
But is that what we're paying for? And we don't know who Trevor McCumbie is.